Hi, my name is Andrew and I'm the owner of AeroGrow. And if this meter looks at all familiar to you and you purchased it on Amazon and you're wondering how to calibrate your meter, you are definitely in the right place. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now the instructions, I just want to say, uh, the instructions, the written instructions can make it seem a bit complicated. It's really not complicated. There are only a couple of steps to it. I have everything laid out right here that you're going to need to do the job and we're going to do it right now. So stick around. Hi, welcome back. So to get started, I want to explain that what we're going to be doing today is called a three-point calibration. Now you can do either a one-point calibration, which is where you'll focus on the 6.86 as your one and only calibration metric, or you can do three-point. Three-point gives you better accuracy, and every once in a while it is a good idea to do that, uh, regardless of what you're measuring, because it sets the entire meter back to the factory spec. So that's what we're going to be doing. So to get started, you want to always have a container of fresh distilled water, uh, which you can get at the grocery store, just normal distilled water, and have a little container of that uh, handy so that you can rinse your meter uh, between the readings and also so that when you're all done, you can rinse your meter in the water and then put your meter away and it'll be nice and safe. Okay, so the first step in this is that we need to mix up our three containers of buffer solution. Now you'll notice that there's a very specific order that I put these in. And it's not what you would think. Normally, people would be tempted to put these in numerical order. So they would, they would do the, the four, and then the six, and then the nine. But we don't do that when we calibrate a meter. We actually start with the six, then we do the four, then we do the nine. That's very important because your meter is set up to test in that way. If you try to test in a different order, your meter will, will get confused, and so will you. So please line them up this way every time you do it. Uh, even if you think you'll remember, just line them up like this physically and you can't go wrong. So we're going to mix these up by simply taking 250 milliliters of water. And we're going to mix that into each of these jars. So the way I like to do this is I like to put the powder in first because then as I'm filling, the, uh, the powder will get mixed with the water a little bit more easily. So just dump that right in there, 6.86. You can see this jar is labeled. Uh, it's a good idea to label the jars. If you're going to store these for any length of time, you're going to want these jars labeled because one thing you do not want to do, let me just cover this really quickly, you do not want to cross-contaminate these jars. So what that means is whatever you're using to stir the solution as you mix it, Again, you're going to want to rinse that tool off between each jar because otherwise you'll be transferring liquids to each other and that's going to mess up the whole operation. So uh, 250 milliliters goes into the jar to mix with the powder, 6.86 this is, and you can see it perfectly fits that jar. It's designed that way. <laughs> and just give it a quick stir. Now these do take a couple of minutes to, uh, to dissolve, so I may actually need to uh, go off camera, let these dissolve for a bit, and then come back, but we'll see. I'm just going to mix that. Then notice I'm rinsing the stir stick immediately in the distilled water. Just put that cover loosely on there so that you don't cross-contaminate anything. And you can keep that there. Next, we'll move on to the four. Again, 250 milliliters of water, distilled water. And that was, nope, that's right. Then we're, we're going to uh, put the powder right in here. I give it a little tap like that just to break loose any crystals that might be stuck at the top, which can sometimes happen. Okay, so you put that powder in there, add the 250 milliliters, like so. Simple, simple. Okay, stir that up. Again, might take a few minutes for all those crystals to dissolve. And then we are going to put the cap back on there. So, uh, give a rinse to the stir stick, of course, to prevent cross-contamination. Just doing both sides just to make sure I got all of it off there. Okay. Now for the third, 9.18. Mix that up. Put that, oops, put that in, 9.18, there we go. 
And now just simply, just like before, add your 250 milliliters of distilled water. Is that right? Yes, that's a little too much. Put that a little bit back. Yes, that's right. Okay, 250 milliliters, there we go. Which is just shy of eight ounces, by the way. Um, is that what it calculates? To be? I believe it's eight ounces. I'll put the correct number on screen on the YouTube video here. Uh, so if, if all you have is a, a common uh, kitchen measuring cup, you can still figure it out. It's an easy translation. But it doesn't need to be exact, as exact as you can be. Okay, we stirred that up. Gonna let that sit for a moment, and I'm gonna go off camera to let these dissolve, and I'll be right back. Okay, now this is the part of meter calibration that seems to fool everybody or get a little bit confusing. It's really not as long as you keep everything lined up and uncontaminated. Okay, so the way that we do this is that we'll be dipping the meter into each one of these buffer solutions one by one. And the part that is the same between each of them is that we will dip and then we will push and hold the calibrate button for five seconds. That's true with each one of these. Okay, the one thing that differs is that when you dip into the, the six buffer solution, you're not going to do anything else other than push and hold and then release and then let it settle and then you're done with the six. On the next one, on the four, you're going to dip it in for five seconds while holding the calibrate button just like the first one, but this time you're going to let go and then you're going to quickly click it one more time, okay? And then you're going to rinse it and move on to the third. On the third, you're going to push and hold the calibrate button again for five seconds, but then when you release, Still, while holding it in the liquid, you're going to press it twice more, okay, to give you your nine reading. I'll show you how this works, but it's very simple once you get the hang of it. So it's no clicks for five seconds, five seconds and one click, five seconds and two clicks, okay? So rinse it off, begin by doing that. No matter what you do, it's, in my opinion, always a good idea to start by rinsing off the meter in distilled water, okay? So insert the meter into the, the uh, 6.86 solution, press and hold the calibrate, that's the bottom button here, it says C-A-L, press and hold that for five seconds, and you'll see the numbers jumping around. That's completely normal, that's what it should do. And then after five seconds, release, and it is at 6.86. Now, I keep it in the liquid, to show, oh, it's stabilized. I should show that to you again. I'm gonna show that to you one more time here, okay. So, and this just goes to show you the procedure is the same regardless of where you are in the process. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the meter off. I'm gonna turn the meter on. I'm gonna rinse it. And then once again, I'm gonna go into the solution, press and hold for five seconds. Release, and then keep it in there. Let it start flashing. See it flashing? and then it'll stop flashing. When it stops flashing, you are calibrated. At that point, take it out of the first solution, the 6.86, rinse it off, shake it a little bit. There you go. Now we're ready for the next solution, the 4.0, okay? Now this one, as I mentioned before, same thing. You're gonna put it in for five seconds while holding the calibrate button, but then you're going to press it, release, and then press once more, right? and then wait for it to stabilize. So I'm gonna go into the solution, press and hold for five seconds, two, three, four, five, release, press once more. Okay, wait for it to blink, blinking, blinking, and stable. There we go, right at 4.0. And then you're just gonna rinse that off, move on to your third, your 9.18, same thing again. Put it into the solution, press and hold the calibrate for five seconds. The numbers will jump all over the place. That's completely normal. Three, four, five, release. Quickly press once, twice again. Let it start blinking, blink, 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 and then it will stabilize at 9.18. Perfect. Okay, rinse it off, and you are done. Now, what I like to do, just a little extra pro tip here with these meters is once they're all saturated with water like that, just give it a little shake like that. Hold on to it. Don't let it, <laughs> don't let it go flying across the room. But hold on to it. Give it a little shake. 
put the cap back on, make sure everything is relatively good to go, and then just turn it off and you're all set. Okay, that's how you calibrate your meter. So dip, no clicks, dip, one click, dip, two clicks. And as long as you keep them in this order, the six, the four, and the nine, you will get it right every single time, guaranteed. If you don't, let us know and we'll help you out. All right, thank you. Ha, <laughs>